Good morning, new song. Could you stand with me today? And while you're standing, shake your legs and put your hands together and give Jesus some praise this morning. I know some of y'all just woke up. It's okay. Come on in. The Bible says to enter his courts with praise. Yes. So let's enter his courts with praise. Let's open our mouths and begin to lift up Jesus. He is high and lifted up. His train wants to fill this temple today. Holy Spirit, you're welcomed here to do great things in our midst. We glorify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Be exalted, O oh God. And let your presence fill this house right now. In the name of Jesus, we declare it to be so. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can somebody say hallelujah with me? Hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen, amen. Are you ready to worship God this morning? Good to see you all here this morning in the house of the Lord. Who breaks? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes? Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all peace. This is amazing. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing Worthy is the Lamb. 
Is Jesus worthy of your praise this morning? Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King. Hallelujah. God, you're so worthy of our praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. Well, how good and pleasant it is for us to dwell together in unity. Amen. What does unity do? It commands a blessing. Hallelujah. How good? When we dwell together in unity and praise the Lord, praise the Lord. How good and pleasant it is when we dwell together in unity and praise the Lord, praise the Lord. How good, how good and pleasant it is when we dwell together in unity and praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Through the good times, through the bad times too. Jesus, come on, let's praise the Lord. So let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, our whole purpose being here today is just to declare God's worth, to worship Him with worship, to declare His goodness, to declare who He is, but also to be so grateful for His goodness, His mercy, His grace, that unmerited favor that we have. Amen. This morning, we want to sing and declare the goodness of God yes, Lord. over this house and over every Amen. person in this place. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You sing, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me all my days. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God I Sing, I love you, Lord I love you, Lord For your mercy never fails me all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life and All my life you have been faithful like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God all my life all my life you have been faithful So, so good With every breath 
your holy name, Lord God. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sing, Behold. Behold, Jehovah, seated on the throne. Jesus, 
word is Jesus. The word has a name. The word has a name. And it's Jesus. Redemption. Redemption has a name. And it's Jesus. Holiness. Holiness has a name. And it's Jesus.
Today is the day that we get to celebrate communion. And, you know, every time I do this, I, I said, Lord, I don't want it to be like the last time. And the reason why I say that, not because I don't like communion, but it's because I just don't want us to do things in a row. Just everyone remain standing because we're going to take communion and stand it up. God's going to do something special in your life today. Because I think you're going to get another concept about what communion is all about. Even though we, we read the scripture over and over again about, you know, what's supposed to happen and, and what our, our mindset's supposed to be. But here's the part that I like about it. It says, examine yourself. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks of this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of, <clears throat> blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself. And so let him eat in bread, eat the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Amen. I remember when I was a kid, I was scared to take communion if I had lied the week before. <laughs> no, I ain't doing that. I'm going to get struck dead. But you know, right now before you receive this cup, if there's anything you can think of that you didn't do, that you were supposed to do, or something you did you weren't supposed to do, I want you to close your eyes, bow your heads right now. Lord, remind me, because I don't want to take this cup unworthily. I want to really discern the body of Christ, <clears throat> discern who you are. Father, today, before we partake of this cup and, and the bread of life, Lord, remind us it was you went to the cross for us. You died for our sins. You rose from the grave, and you said, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And Lord, we confess we're in Christ Jesus today. So in the name of Jesus, as we partake of the bread that's been given to us, Lord, we take of that bread and we partake of it today, and we take that as unto the body of Christ. We belong a sense of belonging. So partake of that bread that's, that's there. Just take that little wafer and, and go ahead and partake of that. And then, Lord, what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood. Come on, say that out loud. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It cleanses us and makes us whole. And even more so today, somebody's going to come to know Jesus for the first time today. Did you know that? He said, what do you, how do you know that? Because the Holy Spirit said, I brought somebody here. 
to change their life forever. We're going to partake of the cup right now. Lord, we partake of the cup that cleanses our lives and frees us from all condemnation. In the mighty name of Jesus and for his glory, amen. God bless you all. You can pass those cups that are done with and all that kind of thing to the side. They'll take them for you. God bless you. Good morning. Go ahead and take a seat. Thank you for joining us this morning. It's a beautiful day. Is there, uh, if you're new with us, we want to say hi. Is there anybody new with us today? Raise your hand. Let us know that you're here so we can say hi to you. All right. A couple of folks. Amen. If you are new with us, we'd love you to take the connection card of the seat pocket in front of you. Fill that out. Let us know that you're here. If you have a prayer request or have any questions about the church, we'd love to get in touch with you and uh, answer those questions and pray for you, which we do every Wednesday night at our prayer meeting right out here in the foyer. It's a prayer and Bible study, and if you guys haven't availed yourself of that, either in person or online, you should. Um, God's doing some amazing things. We're seeing people being healed. We're seeing uh, relationships restored. We're seeing things. How many of you know God answers prayer? So if you know that, why wouldn't you show up Wednesday? Just saying. All right. Listen, a couple of announcements. Uh, we're not going to do the greeting time this morning. Um, we've got a special. The kids are coming up here in a few minutes, which is awesome. And uh, so we're going to take some time for them. And if you uh, would like to greet afterwards, uh, those of you sitting by the new people, you can go ahead, sneak over and say hi. But um, we have uh, our coffee and connection time out after service out there. And that's a great time to uh, rub shoulders and say hi to people. So um, don't forget uh, Vacation Bible School. Look, I know you all are thinking, well, it's over a month away. I don't have to do anything. <clears throat> Can I just encourage you, get signed up. There's so many logistics that need to go into this. It's really helpful to, and, and besides the fact, July 17th is going to come on you so fast you aren't even going to blink. It's just going to be here. So get signed up. Help us out. Help us help you. Um, there's no cost. There's a free dinner every night for participants and families. Um, just go online, grab one of these. The little, uh, the little QR code will get you where you need to go. Pass these out to friends. It's for kindergarten through fifth grade. And again, that starts in July. So no more save the date. Just get it done. All right. Um, last thing, we talked about it last week. The uh, Parenting with Love and Logic uh, sessions are coming up June 25th. And uh, it does cost for this. Portland Christian Network Services is putting this on. Samuel, who you all know here, uh, is a big part of that. Uh, coming here and making sure that's coming here. He's not here this morning because they're out promoting this, which is awesome. And if you don't know what this is, um, I did this with my kids back before uh, they had social media, back before computers were even a big thing, back with nobody had a cell phone. That was unheard of. But you still had issues with kids, right? You still had to figure out how to let them use their brains instead of you using yours. Can I get an amen? amen? Wouldn't it be nice if your kids had to use their brains instead of you trying to figure out every single thing that's haywire with them? Let me tell you, this walks you through some of the answers to those questions. And uh, it's really awesome. Uh, my kids uh, are terrified of love and logic um, because because it makes them think. So anyway, it's a, it's a wonderful uh, thing that you can avail yourself of. I know that we had a couple of scholarships. Uh, the cost is $30 for the sixth session or 51 bucks for couples. Includes the workbook. Um, we did have a couple of scholarships. I know at least one was used, and um, so that's an awesome thing. Please let us know. Again, there's some of these flyers or at the information counter back there, or you can catch one of us and let us know that you're interested, or you can use a connection card, or you can go to our website, or you can email somebody, or you can just pick up the phone and call one of us. You get it. All right. Okay. 
With that, I think we're ready, Pastor Chuck. If you're ready, we're ready. <laughs> on time, on time. <laughs> hey, um, June is graduation month, and we have got the opportunity today. We want to recognize some of our graduates. And we, yeah, this is a good thing. And we are starting this month with our kindergartners, all right, that they'll be going from our four-year-old, four-year-olds through kindergarten up to what we call big kids church. They've been in little kids church. Now they're going up to big kids church. A lot of these kids have had a limited perspective that you might hear about big kids church because they get to start with us and it's a lot of playing and fun activities so that might be the theme of the highlight for them and I want to introduce you as they come out teacher Sonia she teacher Sonia want you and the kids come out we'll line them up give them a hand come on out Alice follow teacher Sonia just like singing There you go. We'll just line them up. I'll go on this side. You can stand here. Coming up, Graydon. All right, Aston. Here is here. Come down here by me. Here, Aston, you go right here, buddy. You go right there. All right. Hey, you know, Kids Church is great with the kids, and it is absolutely miraculous with amazing teachers. And teacher Sonia, a couple decades, I, I'm sure, right? I mean, my boys who are graduating this year, there are pictures with Teacher Sonia and those guys back in the day. So, Sonia, you are a great representative of our wonderful teachers we have, so thank you for that. You represent this church, a heart for kids, in an incredible way. And so, uh, we got a little promotion uh, diploma, we're going to get them, but they all had speeches that they wrote, but we didn't know, I'm kidding. Um, they were like, this is like, look, we're barely standing here, Pastor Chuck. So, but we did have a couple questions for them. We thought they, it'd be fun if they would share a little bit. I'm going to go all the way down there with Alice. Alice, can you, would you just share with everyone just what you have enjoyed about the, the kids' church, the fourth through kindergarten kids' church that you've been a part of for so many years? What, what is just one thing that you've enjoyed about that? Um, arts and crafts. Arts and crafts, lots of arts and crafts. I like that. Uh, is there anything you're looking forward to going into Big Kids Church? Um, just plain. Yeah, just plain. Okay, okay. That's good. Hey, Aston, how about you? What have you enjoyed? Well, you actually told me one thing. So, will you tell everybody that uh, what you enjoyed a lot about? Uh, Kindergarten class? Um, arts and crafts. Arts and crafts. Well, yeah, arts and crafts is good. What was the one thing that you told me about a uh, member? Daniel and the lion's den. You, he liked that story. He was telling us about Daniel and the lion's den. Now, what about Big Kids Church? What are you looking forward to do in Big Kids Church? Um, playing. Playing. All right, all right, all right. I'll make sure we get that out. Drayden, how about you, buddy? What is something that you enjoyed about being in the kindergarten class? Arts and crafts. Arts and crafts is huge. That is really good. I think we, and, and what are you looking forward to in big kids? Listening. Listening. All right. Wow. That's good. That's good. Yeah, let me get out of the way. That's great. Daniel, how about you? What are you looking forward? Well, what did you enjoy about the Kindergarten class. Arts and crafts. Arts and crafts again. Everybody loves his arts and crafts. I like that. What? Uh, now, wait a minute. You get to start because you guys are always right here on time, and you're over there in the big kids' church at the beginning. What do you like about being over there? I don't know. You don't know? What, what if we do do some playing and stuff. Would that be good? Yeah. Okay, we'll do some playing. All right, I like that. All right, Cole, how about you, buddy? What have you enjoyed about the kindergarten class? The treats. What is it? The oh. treats. <laughs> good. 
What about it? Now, what about going into big kids' church? What? Playing with Cohen. Playing with Cohen. That's good. Awesome. How about you? What did you enjoy about kids' church, the kindergarten time? Um, coloring. Coloring. That's right. You told me about that. You like color. Now, in big kids' church, what are you looking forward to doing in there? I'm playing with my brother, Adam. <laughs> playing with your brother. I like that. You got that. All right, Azir. Last but definitely not least, Azir, what did you enjoy about your kindergarten class? Arts and crafts. Arts and crafts. You guys, come on. Really? What about, now what about going into kids' church, the big, with all the big kids? What are you thinking about with that? Playing. Playing? Playing? Wow. We're going to, you know what, you guys, um, any of you guys looking forward to, you know that I do a lot of the, 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 the teaching, and I do a lot of the Sunday school lessons in first through fifth grade. Are you guys looking forward to that? No one? No one's looking forward to that? What if I do it with a lot of fun and playing? Would that be all right? Okay, then maybe we'll listen to me. All right, that sounds great. Put a lot of effort into that. Give these guys a hand. Go ahead. You give them their, their diplomas. There you go. We want to remember we're going to stand nice and straight so we can get some nice pictures of you guys. There you go. Yeah. Can you flip that around so everybody can see it? Show everybody what a great job you've done. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Give them a hand. You did? That's good. Hey, I'm just going to pray over them, and we are looking forward. We have VBS. I'm sure they already hit that, but we have VBS. We have a lot of fun and exciting things, and I know it sounds like play, 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 but we are big believers in putting God's word into our children, and with that, what it means to them, because it's all about a relationship. It's all about each and every one of these children having a relationship with Jesus. So, Father God, I thank you for these kids and a couple of them that could not make it today. We thank you for the faithfulness of those that have brought them, grandmothers and moms and dads uh, and friends that have brought so many of the kids into this house. We want to be faithful to you, Father, as we serve these children moving forward. So a blessing upon them. We thank you for all that you're doing by your Holy Spirit in their lives. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's turn it back over to you, Lee. Okay, guys, can you follow Teacher Sonia? We got, now we got to head back to class. We got more playing to do. Oh, thanks, bud. Well, kids are amazing, right? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm thinking I want some of that arts and crafts. I don't know about you. But, I mean, it's across the board. I think I'm in. I don't know. All right. We're, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, bring our tithes and offerings. This is, this is what happens when you guys support the work of God in this house. You know, in, a, in the coming weeks, we're going to be uh, uh, honoring some middle schoolers. We're going to be honoring some high schoolers. There's a few college graduates there's some people that are, are way out of college that have graduated. Where's Carrie? You know, maybe we're going to say something about Carrie here in a little bit. Um, but, you know, we're sowing into people. And I think that, uh, especially with the kids, that's, that's huge. That's just, you know, you know what happens if you mess with a kid. Imagine what happens when you bless a kid. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, those of you that uh, know the offering baskets are by this door and back there. We don't pass the buckets, but on your way out, you can leave uh, your offering in those baskets. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for our kids. God, we thank you that we can pray over them. We can support uh, the ministry that helps them grow in the knowledge of you. And God, that does not go unnoticed. It doesn't go unfruitful. Your word says, train them up in the ways they should go, and in the end, they will not depart from it. So, Father, it is our desire to do just that with our kids, to train them up in the way they should go. 
So, Father, we ask you to take these gifts that we give to you because you've given everything to us. Take them, multiply them, use them, increase your kingdom with them. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I think Pastor Richard has a message for you. All right. <clears throat> How many of you know that God, we're, we're, we're a part of the kingdom of God? Yeah. We're going to do a special song this morning. We've been working on it for several weeks, and things kept us from hindering for, from doing this particular song. It's, but, you know, the thing about it is we're a part of the kingdom of God, but the, your cue for we're going to get involved with this whole thing is that if you want to know what heaven looks like, it's looking like me and you. That's your, that's your part to stand, where you're going to stand, we're we going to get involved, okay? Search the stars to knock on heaven's door. Creation groans for God to be revealed. And every wound we carry will be healed. My eyes on the sun. Lord, your will be done. That is the kingdom. Power. The power, the glory. Forever. Story. We're singing freedom, our testimony, we'll be singing forever, amen. We'll be singing forever, we'll be singing forever and ever, amen. Beautiful each color that he made, your love's the only remedy for If you have a 
He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Anybody believe that? Come on, say. He's coming. He's coming. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Can you sing that a little bit louder? I can't quite hear you. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming like on a white horse, and he's coming. He's gonna take all darkness. He's coming. He's coming. He's gonna get he's all coming, the enemies coming. out of the way. He's coming. He's, he's coming. coming. Mine is the kingdom. Here we go. Mine is the kingdom, the power, the glory, forever and ever. He finished my story. We're singing freedom. We're singing freedom. In our testimony. Our testimony. We're singing forever. We'll be singing forever. Are we getting better? There we go. Come on, give a shout to the Lord right now. All right, we're going to read, read the Word of God, and then it's going to be a little bit different than what you think. Everybody stand for the Word of God. We're going to read that, and then we're going to get into something that I think probably you haven't been. Uh, I kind of told you we're going to do this, and now we're going to do it today. And, oh, Lord, have mercy. It's going to be really exciting because we're going to look at some aspects of what the kingdom of God looks at like from the opportunities that are available to us. We're going to go to uh, Matthew chapter 20. And start for verse 1. It says, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And 
And again, he went out about the sixth hour and the ninth hour and did likewise. And they said to him, because no one hired us. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and whatever is right, you will receive. And when those came, he, uh, who he had who were hired about the 11th hour, they each received a denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner. But he answered and said, uh, answered one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree uh, with me for a denarius? Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I am good? Verse 16 together. So the last will be first and the first last. For many are called, but few are chosen. Let's pray. Jesus, today we're going to see this in real life, in real time. Because we're going to see that actually acted out before us. Lord, thank you because you're going to use an example of, of what we'll experience in, in the next few moments of having to come to a place of judgment of whether God is a good God or not. Or whether it's fair or not. And Lord, I want to put all those things aside for us to spend some time together to get into your word and find out that you're a great, you're an honorable God. You do all things well and all purposes are accomplished. We give all glory and honor and praise to you in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people set. You can go ahead and be seated, but as you're being seated, I have a question today, and I'm going to employ some people today. You said, what? I'm going to get three people out of this audience that you're either in transition with a job, you need a job, and, and I'm not putting an age limit, it could be a teenager or someone else, but I want three people to volunteer, you know, you know something, Pastor, I really need help to getting a job situation. Can you help me do, can you help a brother out? Anybody like that, raise your hand right now. Raise the high way I can see it. I don't want to look and see there's one over there, one over there, one back there. You see them out there. There's one in the back, one down here. Where's the other one? Put your hand back up if you want to do something here. Did I miss him? Okay. There's my, there's my friend, the usher back there. He's going to take care of you. Now, here's the deal. All three of you are going to work for me. Say what? One of you is going to work 30 minutes, another's going to work 20 minutes, and another one's going to work 10 minutes. Go get them, put them to work, and I'll tell you what they did. And you guys are like, what are they going to be doing? It ain't none of your business. But they're going to be working, and you're going to see how God works this thing out in practicality. Give the Lord a big hand clap for these folks that are going to do this. My usher back there is waiting for, my, for our new workers. Well, today we'll continue our teaching regarding the kingdom of God by examining three foundational principles that must be addressed before we can peacefully pursue the kingdom of God. Terms like equality, equity appear to be similar, similar but they are not in comparison with the kingdom principles uh, embraced uh, uh, in a philosophy that is de uh, devoid of righteousness, peace, and joy. It's not included in those things. We will examine the biblical text, uh, the, the, the things that will challenge equity. And what equity means? Fairness and justice. Everybody wants justice. Isn't that right? Isn't, is justice a good thing? Say yes or no. But will you always get justice? Well, let's go to the next one. Equity. You know what equity means? Sameness. How can have anything be the same? There are no, there's no two... Things are exactly the same, but sameness. Well, anyway, these terms have been used regularly in, in today's culture to describe things that relate to political platforms 
that use laws and, and, le and legislation to support social, economic, and racial equality. Today, we will examine three things that are important for us to embrace if we are to, going to pursue the li living in the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Now, listen carefully. I will be doing a lot of direct teaching that's from the word of God that will totally violate things you've been taught. Yeah, I know some of I heard that, uh-oh. Get ready, brace yourself. First of all, equity is a positive, uh, is a positive discriminations attempt to achieve fairness across race, gender, and class, etc., They're trying. But you know what? Jesus already showed you it can't be done. Your expectations sometimes will never be met by what you thought was going to happen. Here's the second one. Equality will never have to be considered by the one who made everything to prove his love for all creation. God doesn't have to prove, you, prove to you anything. If you love me, prove to me that you love me. The fact that you're here, you're a product of God's love. Amen. The fact that you're here, you're a product of God's mercy. Amen. And if we, if we go for justice, all y'all should have been dead, including me. Amen. Because we've done things that were deserving death. Well, what about the last one? Equality cannot dictate to the creator the quantity necessary to achieve fairness. In other words, say, well, if it's going to be fair, then you've got to do this or you've got to take that away from him. We've tried to do all these manipulative things, and it's done nothing but cause problems. Here's the deal. We're going to Mac, back into Matthew 20, verses, verse through 5, and here's something you'll discover. For the kingdom of heaven is like this. The landowner who went out early in the morning and hired laborers for the, his vineyard, and now he went and he had agreed, uh, agreed the laborers for a denarius one, uh, a day and sent them out into his vineyard, and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. What if he ignored the people that were in the marketplace? Well, was it? well, too bad. Not my issue. Some of us don't have a problem with some people are ignored, especially when we got the advantage in the first place. That's something wrong with us, not something wrong with God. So let's go on to the next couple of verses and I'll, I'll break them down for you. And so he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. And again, he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour and did likewise. Now, there's something brewing at this particular point. And some of you already are looking at this. Well, that just isn't fair. It's just not right. Somebody's being taken advantage of. Look at it this way. We have been hired as laborers. Can I get an Amen. You, you didn't get hired, get hired as a model. You're a laborer, okay? Pick up the ax, whatever you're doing, and get to work. Well, what about this? Each laborer will receive the same compensation for the work he does. That's just not fair. I've been working for two hours, and he's coming on here, and you know ahead of time that they're all being hired for the same thing, but all of a sudden you think, I'm going to get more money because I've been here longer. And don't tell me you haven't thought that way before. Because we all are looking for an advantage. But this, this piece is even better. We were without purpose and direction until the landowner gave us an opportunity to establish direction in our lives. Can I get an amen there? Amen. You wasn't doing nothing, wasn't going nowhere, and then all of a sudden somebody presented to you an opportunity. We don't, sometimes we don't, don't, aren't thankful for the opportunities that God has given us in our lives. Amen. We think, well, I deserve, I know you've never said this. I deserve better than this. And some of you ditched somebody, said you, you, you were married to somebody, oh, I deserve better than him. Really? I'll leave that alone because that's another sermon all by itself. <laughs> Being chosen by the Lord is a discovery that we have, uh, it's a discovery that the Lord sees something in us that oftentimes we don't realize. It's called Potential. Potential. God doesn't hire people who do not have potential. And what you're going to discover today is potential that you've had that's been dormant that the Holy Spirit wants to activate in you. Well, it goes further than that. The Lord uh, sees that potential and, his, and the Lord has designed us to find significance and through the opportunities he's given to us. Now, what about this? We, 
all have an equal opportunity to discover gifts and talents that, uh, <clears throat> that remained idle until they were given an opportunity to work. Have you ever discovered that you, that you knew, how, knew how to do something that you didn't think you knew how to do? I didn't know I could do that. There's so much that's locked up in you, and we need to learn how to trust the Holy Spirit to reveal and let those things go that we can find fulfillment, not just for us, but for other people that we can be, use our gifts to make their lives better. Can I get an amen for that one? Come on. We all have the equal opportunity to discover these gifts and talents that remain idle, that were given this opportunity. Now, what about this? When we agree to work in the Lord's field, we must be willing to let go of what others may receive that is comparable or greater than what we were given or we received. Okay, I'm going to do my confession. You won't do yours, I'll do mine. I remember when we were kids, and I really wanted this, this model airplane for Christmas. And so I was being extra good and keeping my room clean, making my bed, and this other type of thing. And I was expecting to see that under the tree. Well, I said, oh, there must be a mistake. They must be waiting until the last minute. The plane didn't come. But see, I'm trying to play off of what I feel that I was entitled to because I was doing all the right things. And so I was feeling that my workmanship is such like this, that God owed me something or my parents owed me something. Folks, you need to get over this idea that God owes you anything. The Bible says, owe no, owe, owe no man anything except to do what? Sometimes God loves you the best by not giving you what you want. But he will give you what you need. For when we agree to work in the Lord's field, we must be willing to let go of the other, uh, what others have received that is, is comparable or greater than what we receive. Equity in God's economy is about treating everyone equally regardless of whether we agree with it being fair or not. I think some of us have done this. We've cut people off in, in our arena of folks that we feel that have gotten things that we deserved that they didn't. Can I make it plainer for you? Some of us let jealousy cut off relationships because people feel like they got a better advantage than we did, and so I don't think I want to be around them anymore because... And we find things wrong with them, all the things that are wrong with them that God should have known better than to bless them, but he blessed them in spite of what we thought was wrong with them. I know you've never felt that way because you're a Christian. You're filled with the spirit of demonic presence. <laughs> Equality does not give value to the individual differences or diversity. Now, Here's the phrase, if you don't remember anything else about this, this message. The Lord tells him up front, he says, whatever is right, you will receive. That's in the Bible. You read the text. You read over it because you kind of slid over that one. The denari denarius was the right amount that you're going to get. And so don't expect more than what God promised he would give to you. That's where disappointment comes. Because he said, well, I worked a little bit over. I worked. And, you know, everyone worked side by side with someone else. She sure is slow. I don't know what her problem is. And we've already got ourselves better than that, that next person. But then when at the end of the day, her check is the same as yours, and you don't feel good because you work faster and smarter. I know you don't feel like that. Well, let's put it this way. You don't want us to know you feel like that. Let's get with this. God is the only person that can make statements without having, re, uh, having to recant them. He gives opportunities to people that would, they would, we would never give a second look at. But here's, a, here's the key of the whole thing. When he hires someone, he's not fearful of what others may think or how they will respond. Remember when David was going to be crowned king? And they come over to his father's house and, and he's about to appoint the king. And all his brothers marched before him. And, and Sam says, that's not the one, that's not the one, that's not the one. And they said, is, Jesse, are these all the kids you have? He says, well, I got one over there that likes to play around with sheep. 
You know, he's always playing with his harp and this other type of stuff, and he plays around the sheep. There is one more, but really, he's not the type that you're looking for. You are the type that God is looking for. He set his sights upon you, and it's time for you to start rising to the occasion and believing that God is, he has great things in store for you. What about, remember the story of Gideon? If you know the story of Gideon, he was found hiding out from the Midianites in the wine press because the, the people kept coming in and stealing everything from them. And the Lord calls him while he's in the wine press, and he says, you're a mighty man of valor. He says, no, I'm not. I'm from the weakest family in Israel. I don't know how to do anything. And I'm just hiding in this wine press so, so the Midianites won't come and steal all of, all of the, the crop that we have. And God puts his anointing upon him, and he gets 300 people that destroy, destroy thousands of people. Do not look at what you have. Look at what God has inside of you. Well, we must be willing to abandon our <clears throat> idea of what we think is fair, and the only righteous one is who is, able, is the ruler of things. Now, we must not allow ourselves to succumb to the idea that what we believe is fair. Here's another thing about that. What we may believe that people are being treated equally, but at the same time think it's not fair. That's kind of a dichotomous relationship. They're treating equally, but our agenda is, but it's still not fair. This little piece will help you, I hope. Equality will never be able to give an accurate assessment of individual differences or diversity. It won't. It won't. Go to Luke chapter 18, verses 18 through 23. This will help you. <clears throat> A certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And so Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. You know that what the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor your father and mother. And he said, all these things I have kept from my youth. Now this is where it gets exciting. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. But when he heard this, he became very sorrowful, for he was very rich. Did you really mean that? I mean, what can I do to inherit eternal life? But you know what I found out? The key was in the word that he used, inherit. Inherit. Money never left his language. He's thinking about an inheritance, which, which is, you know, denaries and whatever else. He says, what can I do to inherit eternal life? He says, there's something, there must be some value that's been placed upon it. Look at this. We must come to a place in our relationship with the Lord, the question of the rich man uh, has the same impact on what it takes for us to find our place in the kingdom of God. The fact that the rich ruler was concerned about inheriting the kingdom of God reveals that his mindset was on earthly things. How about this? He wanted spiritual guidance that would encompass uh, his attachment with the things of the world. But what about this? We have value to the truth and wisdom that he would gain. Uh, he gave value to the truth and wisdom that he gained from Jesus. He's a good teacher. Tell me, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He's calling Jesus good, but he's got an agenda. Well, Jesus pointed the young man's attention toward the word of God. He says, moral obligation according to the word of God must be in order uh, before we can enter the kingdom of God. Now, following the commandments and living righteous, a righteous life is important. So I'm not going to try to dismiss that living a righteous life is important. But somehow he had fixed in this idea that I've done all these things since I was a uh, young kid. I remember at our household, my dad was never in the military, 
But oh boy, did he, when it's time to clean, check out our rooms, ooh, Jesus. He pulled on the corner of the bed, it wasn't just quite square. Mm-hmm. You know what he do? He'd go in there and just mess up the whole thing, start all over again. Didn't like that? He'd do it again. Corners had to be straight. Now, you think this is crazy, but, I mean, just have compassion on me. We would have to, on Saturday, wash all of our clothes, iron all of our clothes for the next week, and put them in the closet Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday before we could go out and do anything. Were you in military school? That's what we learned to do. But you know, as difficult as I thought that it was, it taught me something. To submit to authority and also to, leave, to live a disciplined lifestyle in, in, in some areas. I'm not perfect in this thing, not by any means. But you know something, God will, it may have you in a situation where you don't quite understand it, but take the best you can from it and learn that you can be all that God can be in your life. Well, the ruler was uh, confident that he, yeah, that's right, go ahead and applaud the Lord for that, that's a good one. So he's confident, but he got to that part that really got to him. He says, sell his possessions was his first request. Second was give it to the poor. That I know that got on his last nerve. And follow Jesus with no guarantee that his wealth would be replaced and uh, was a greatest challenge. And you know what the Bible says? He walked away. Didn't have a discussion. I'm gone. The rich ruler was overcome with the sadness and attached to his wealth hindered his desire for the kingdom. He would not fully commit to the kingdom. His reaction was to walk away from what he thought he really wanted. These last couple of things <coughs> are important as I get to my very final point. Jesus pointed out the great challenge between wealth and the kingdom of God. We must be willing to surrender material possessions to follow Jesus. I hear an amen, somebody said, mm. I heard that, I groan, oh. Oh, so, oh. I'm gonna give you a chance to be a Christian. We must give priority to spiritual growth over worldly wealth. That was weak, but we'll go with that for now because I'm going to finish this up and then you really know what we're talking about. Mark chapter 12, just three verses, 41 through 44. 44. Giving your all with no regrets. This portion of the Bible is an amazing place. Well, let's just read the context of, of the scripture. Now, Jesus was opposite the treasury and saw how the people put money into the treasury and many who were rich, put in much. Then one poor widow came and threw threw in in two mites, which make make a quandrance. Quandrance isn't very much, I'll tell you that much. So he called his disciples to himself, said, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor woman, this poor widow, has put in more than all those who have given to the treasury. For they all put in out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, put in all that she had, her whole livelihood. No, I'm not going to have you empty your pockets before you leave here. (laughs) Just relax. You know, I don't want your, you know, pass number for your debit card. Seriously, really. Really. It's a hard issue. The woman demonstrated sacrificial giving without holding back. She was willing to give all of her resources without regret. She gave from her heart of gratitude to demonstrate her love. It was all that she had, but it didn't prevent her from giving. That's a pretty good deal. She gave out devotion, excuse me, she gave out of devotion rather than out of emotion. We're almost home. She was not looking for praise or recognition. Her relationship with God was authentic. She gave 
all, her all trusting God to provide for her needs beyond her own means. And this part is so good. She was not measuring her gifts, gifts with the thought of those of others. Generosity moved her to give all she had. That's pretty amazing. Hmm. Humility overruled pride. She resisted drawing any attention to herself. We should pursue humility over recognition of our generosity. And we, we choose, or excuse me, she chose to give priority over all things. Last little part, then we're going to check in with our people, see how well they did. The widow found contentment despite her circumstances. She was rich in faith toward God. The Lord honored her faith, and she gave, him, gave to him from a grateful heart. Usher, are my people done yet? Bring them down here, and we're going to take care of these folks. Give them a big hand, those folks that are coming down here. I want to tell you something. This, I was working on this little example, and I went through it 19 different ways, and I didn't do a good job, but that's okay. But the main thing is, these people came in faith and trust, had no desire at all to know exactly what they were going to do, but they were willing to do it. Come on. They had no... Now remember, I said I was going to pay them. And I think you ought to pay them. You got money in that dead bag. Give these folks some money. Oh, yes, it did. I, I printed it this morning. Praise the Lord. Now, now what, what was your responsibility? Let me get a microphone here. What was your responsibility? What, what, were, you, what were you commissioned to do? Check, 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 check. I was commissioned to pick three of the largest donut holes from each variety and put it on a plate. <laughs> Did you get the largest ones? Um, I, it, it's a little bit debatable, but I'm pretty sure I did. Good. Those are my donuts. Thank you. I paid good money for these donuts. You touch these donuts, you're going to die. Is that a good exchange for what you got? But you don't even know how much money you got. I'm not going to tell you. I know. What, what were you supposed to do, young lady? I was supposed to count books in your office. You got a lot of books in there. I counted Thin, it might have been paper, but I counted it because it looked like a thin book. So how many, how many how books do you count? Uh, 504. Praise the Lord. <laughs> my friend, what were you commissioned to do? What were you supposed to be doing? Uh, my job was to inventory the kitchen and count the plates, the knives, the spoons, the glasses, the coffee mugs, the... Mixers, the teas, the spices, the forks and spoons. So how did you do, my friend? I did well. I got them all. Uh, I'm pretty sure I counted well. Okay, tell me, tell, give us a little, little, little roll out of what you, what you counted. I got 49 glasses, uh, 45 coffee mugs. I got 14 spoons, 22 forks, 14 knives, 23 plates, two coffee pots, two blenders, Two, three ovens, one hot plate, coffee grinder, water bottle, mixer, four vases, box cups. Now, here's the, here's the thing before I let them leave the stage and we're going to close this thing off. Each one of you got the same amount of money. Each one of you got $100. Mm. There you go. Have a nice day. You can go. But here's the deal. 
as much as you want this to be equitable, they each got $100. But if we were going by the platitude of how much per hour, the one who only worked for, uh, you know, the donut hole, well, I'll leave the donut holes alone. <laughs> the donut holes ain't going nowhere. I done told you that. But actually, that was a person that, honestly, if you looked at per hour, the one who did count the donut, donut holes, if you did at an hourly rate, she made $600 an hour. The one who did the other things in the kitchen made $300 an hour. The other one who did the books was $200 an hour. But you know something? Ain't none of them complaining. Do you get it? Oh, how come you? Stop. Let me go to my closing now as the worship team comes up here. The kingdom. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand with you. The first thing is, none of them knew they were going to get anything. And I know, I don't know them personally, but I think they probably all could. Could y'all use that money that y'all got? Was that was a good thing? But the, but the point of it was that God wants us to show, show us that if you do it on a per hour rate, you say, who gets $600 an hour? Our God does. That's how much you're, he's, you're worth more, a lot more than you think that you are. As we conclude today, this message, I want you to go to a place in your heart where you may be struggling. The enemy's devalued you. The song we're going to sing for our closing is, How Great Is Our God. And it fits so purposefully the words are, the splendor of the king, clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. Just bow your heads with me for a moment. There's something the Holy Spirit's doing right now, and I think it's about to enter someone's heart to say, you know, I've been trying all my life to find things socially equitable and and try not to get ripped off. And, but I've kind of rebuffed a great God because of all the things I see in the world that just aren't fair. But I, I see now when people would just come and say, well, I'll do that. I don't know what I'm going to get, but something within me says, I just want to be a participant in the kingdom of God. It doesn't matter. I'm going to walk into someone's heart right now that says, you know, from the time I was a child, I felt like I'd been ripped off. I've, I've been marginalized. I've been put aside. And I never could reach God like I wanted to. But somehow, just seeing this simple illustration of people that are just willing to go and do what they were told to do with no expectation and just be overwhelmed with just simple little hundred bucks, lets me know that there is a God. There's someone who cares. Before we pray, I want to ask, if that's you today and you're willing to not give God a try, you're willing to turn your life over to God, while heads are bowed and eyes are closed, just lift your hand right now and say, I, I'm done. Thank you, ma'am. Somebody else says, I'm, I'm done. I'm willing to do that today. If it's just for that one person, that's why we're doing it today. That's why we met today. Would you mind standing? The lady that's lifting her hand. Anybody else is, is going to stand with? Oh, there's several other people. Okay. Wow. Wow. Can you come down here? You folks are standing. Come on. You ought to be applauding the Lord for what He was just seeing happen. Everybody else stand up. You have your people to pray with these folks that are down here. The splendor of the king, let's start there. 
The splendor of the king. The splendor of the king. Clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. If you wanted to come, there's still time for you to come. All the earth rejoice. He wraps himself. He wraps himself in light. Darkness tries to hide. And darkness tries to hide. And it trembles at his voice. It trembles at his voice. How great. How great. your hands to the Lord today. Lord, we're not through with the kingdom yet, but Lord, let the kingdom live in us in a new way. Lord, we were all in need of something to do and you found us and you gave us the best that heaven could offer. Lord, help us today to move forward in all the things the kingdom has given us a great advantage for. Lord, thank you for every person that's responded today. Thank you for the worship that's gone forth unto you. We give all glory and honor and praise to you. In Jesus' name, the name above every other name, amen. I give a shout to the Lord. God bless you.